Good evening, everyone. This is Mark from Right Line Trading. Um, we're, I'm going to give 60 seconds more because we have a lot of uh, really a lot of traders just uh, coming into the room. So uh, just uh, 60 more seconds and then we're going to start. Okay, everyone. Um, really, thank me. Thank you for giving me your time this evening. Um, I think I'm going to show you a really, really uh, uh, powerful trading system um, that leverages both the Laguerre and order flow. And uh, I was going to give you some great entries. And um, besides getting you into winners, you're going to you're going to be able to avoid almost all losers. It's only going to align on really, really good trades. And I'm just going to start off here with the um, with our with our mandatory dis disclosure and disclaimer um, that all signals and trading opportunities provided both orally, written, or electronically that are disclosed to visitors, our subscribers, are for educational and demonstration purposes only. Uh, right Line Trading takes no responsibility for any participation by visitors or, or subscribers in the futures of Forex markets, nor for any profits or losses that may be incurred. Participating in trading in the futures and Forex markets, it obviously we know it involves substantial risk. You can lose um, a lot of money. Participation is not appropriate for everybody. Always uh, take careful, considerate, careful consideration of your financial position on every trade. Uh, and we are not registered financial advisors nor licensed commodity trading advisors. And with that said, what I want to start off with, um, not not going to go into my my background, is um, is is to look at, um, and I'm not even going to go into in, into really the uh, uh, any of the background on the system, except to say that it works on futures, forex, and stocks. I mean, the, the system, as all of our systems, have forward-looking ability. And the indicators that we're going to be looking at lead price, they do not lag price. And the software is purposed to predict the future movement of price. Now, it works on, on any financial instrument and, and, on, and, on any, and on any time frame. Now, we have a number of different ways that we can display price. The system is going to work on any of them, uh, but I just want to show you why I like Unirenko bars. And you can choose any kind of bar that you like. Um, now, both Unirenko and range are time and tick independent. The only thing that determines when a new candle develops is how far the market moves. So it's based solely on price volatility. If you have a five range, every time the market moves five pips or five ticks or five cents, you're going to you're going to get a new candle. It, it uh, does not have two variables, which are how far the market moves and some given unit of time, or how far the market moves and some given unit of ticks. It's just one independent variable here, and that's how much the market moves. So I traded range for a very very long time until I found Unirenko. And we optimize each of the settings for each of the financial instruments. And Unirenko really does create uh, the illusion of a really nice trend. And, and that illusion actually is very helpful. Now, a lot of the volatility that's going on, a lot of the choppiness is inside that Unirenko candle. And visually not being able to see it is act, it, it is in fact extremely advantageous and it really gives us some some real terrific entries 
Now, I want to review this again really briefly um, because not everybody in the room has heard it, although probably a lot of you have. Um, the weakness of Unirenco bars is they do obliterate price action um, from candle to candle to some extent. Uh, they, they sort of pull back the information of who's in control of the market, the bulls or the bears. And they do that by not allowing you to, to evaluate standard Japanese candlestick patterns, a golfing, an engulfing candle, a dark cloud cover, a piercing candle, a doji, um, a shooting star formation. Uh, it's more difficult to look at uh, rising and falling triangles or channels, although you can see them with Unirenko. They're just a lot more difficult. And um, it is a little, it, it is a bit of a weakness, but as, as I've also mentioned previously, the power of Japanese candlestick patterns has really been lost significantly in the, in the last few years. Uh, when, the, when the Japanese rice traders developed Japanese candlestick patterns 400 years ago, it was based on, a, on, a, on a, the mathematical supposition that the power of every tr uh, buyer was equal to the power of every seller. If there was some outlier, some tremendously powerful buyer or some tremendously powerful seller, it would skew uh, Japanese candlestick patterns and and decrease their power. And that's exactly what the kind of market that we have today. Excuse me, I, I, I got to finish my bottle of Jack Daniels here. Um, no, I'm just kidding. But anyway, that's what we have today. We have a market where in some markets, 80% of all the volume is, is created by the institutions. And they're going to they're going to really decrease the power of Japanese candlestick patterns for us to to allow us to determine how price is going to move out into the future. So we're losing what is becoming an increasingly weaker way of trying to assess market conditions going out into the future. And it's the same thing with Pfizer rising and falling triangles. Now, you, I always see uh, traders looking at these. Go, you know, looking at long-term patterns, looking at dojis as reversal signals, uh, looking at uh, rising triangle breakouts to the upside, falling triangle breakouts to the downside, uh, areas of consolidation, and nobody ever looks at the at how well they how well that they work. Um, I mean, what is the predictive value of a breakout of a rising triangle? What is the predictive value of a breakout of a falling triangle? And it's something that I haven't done either, but I'd be willing to bet that these kind of patterns have, been, have become much weaker in recent years because of the development of institutional trading. And it's so dominated the market. Um, in addition, in this era where a single tweet from anybody in, in a position of power can totally reverse the market in, in, a, in a heartbeat. All of these patterns have just become a lot weaker. And if you're going to trade them over time, I think they're going to fail with, with an increasing, uh, it incre you know, in, 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 in an increasing percentage of trades. So I, I believe this is really getting older and staler. No one's ever made money trading rising and falling triangles, although there's a lot of traders pushing it where they may turn a, turned 100 into 100,000, turn 50 cents into $5 million. And what did they do? They traded rising and falling triangles, J patterns, breakout patterns. Well, maybe you, know, maybe you can play around with small biotechs that are worth 25 cents. But I'm telling you, these patterns are becoming weaker and weaker as institutional trading is becoming more and more powerful and dominating the market. It's not to say that they don't have value. It's just to say that that the power of their value it, it is, um, is, is on the wane. Now, the strength of Unirenko is they do filter out noise, and that's very helpful. But in order to trade it, you really need powerful leading indicators that signal an entry. 
Um, and when you do get that entry, they do create superior trading opportunities. And you do need optimized inputs for individual markets to create superior trading opportunities. Now, for the most part, we're ignoring these rising and falling triangles and, and these, um, these breakouts. The only pattern that I see consistently being very helpful is, is consolidation. And I can show you why, even with institutional trading, consolidation remains a real powerful signal. Um, and I kind, of, I kind of use that one signal and would pull it aside um, as one that's going to continue to be extremely important, no matter how powerful institutional traders become. Now, I don't want to even go into this. Now, what I want to do is, now this is a three-line indicator, but we're not using the three-line indicator anymore. What we're going to do is we're just going to look at order flow. And what I want to do is go over our order flow assessment. Now, there are only five parameters present on any given trading chart. And they can be manipulated in lots of different, in lots of different ways. And as far as volume is concerned, it can be very, very, a very elegant assessment. Now, those, those parameters are the open, close, high, low, of every formation, and they're also volume. That's all that's present on a chart. There's no magical additional parameter that can give you any more information that then can be gleaned from those five parameters. Now, looking back, you maybe can make an analysis, but it's got to be based on those five parameters since there's nothing else on a trading chart to use. Now, market delta, I think, is a very, very important number. Now, some traders will use the delta of each individual um, tick value or cent value or pip value. But I don't believe that this has the power to really tell you um, the direction of the market. I think you need the sum of all of these components to provide you with a candle delta. And you're gonna see that the delta itself can often be a misleading number and how we've created an assessment to really make it an accurate number. Now, all this tells you is the depth of buyers and the depth of sellers on your dome. It doesn't talk about executed buys or executed sells. This is why you can use it on Forex, because Forex volume is, is very different than volume on futures and stocks. But on the Forex dome, there's always buyers on the bid and there's always buyers on the ask. So you can determine whether there's more buyers, look, more traders looking to buy or more traders looking to sell. Now, there, now there's also Another parameter where you look, you look at traders who have a tremendous commitment to buy and a tremendous commitment to sell, um, that's another assessment. We're just looking at the depth of traders on one side of the market and the other side of the market, adding them up and coming up with the delta. Now, this is, a, this is, a, this is blurry. It, it's 29.85, and this is an up candle. And you would think with more traders looking to buy the market than looking to sell the market, if the market delta of the candle is positive, you would always get an up uh, candle. Now, the problem with, with the market delta is that's not always true. Now, here's a positive delta with a down candle. Now, so even though there were more buyers on the dome on the on the buying side than there were on the selling side. This candle had more selling pressure because the sellers were more committed than the buyers. So a lot of these traders were just sitting there, but not really looking to purchase the market. So if this is the case, and this also happens in every individual tick value or cent value or pip value. So if that's the case, how do you use this metric in order to determine the direction of price going out into the future?
And if you look at if you look at um, this is just a whole series of candles, and they're, they're not they're not Unirenko. They don't have to be to to make this point. These are range candles. And you can see that the vast majority of market deltas that are green will create an up candle, and the vast majority of market deltas that are red will will trade will create a down candle. But if you just track the absolute value of the delta, it's really not going to tell you any information on the right edge. If the market delta has been increasing in magnitude as you go, and this is just the magnitude of the delta, you can still get a very large delta to the upside with a down candle. So, so the amount of predictive value you get on the right edge is essentially close to zero. And that's the problem with chasing market delta and with most of the assessments that are done today. If you want to know where hidden buyers and hidden sellers are, I'm going to show you where they are. But if you're not going to find it looking at market delta or looking at tick value, cent value, or pip value inside any individual price level here. Now, what we've done is we've determined that one standard deviations worth of market delta values are going to trade in the direction of the color. So one standard, devi one standard deviations worth of market deltas that are green are going to provide an up candle and one standard deviations worth of market deltas that provide a down color are going to give you a down candle. And what you're looking at here are outliers that skew market delta and that need to be eliminated. And if you can eliminate the outliers, then market delta becomes a very significant and powerful way to determine how price is going to move out into the future. So that, that's exactly what we've done. What we look at is the delta of each candle on the two higher multiple Unirenko charts. We don't look at we don't look at the delta at all of your trading chart. And that's one of the I think that's one of the keys to the success of our software is we basically almost do no analysis off a of price on the trading chart. All our analysis is done off of the two higher time frames. Now, if you're trading a two minute we're going to look at the six minute and the 18 minute. If you're trading um, a, uh, a tick, we're going to look at the two higher FIB numbers. If you're trading a range, say a five range, we're going to look at the eight range and the third range, eight range and 13 range, which, which, which are the two higher FIB numbers. And we're going to look at the market delta of the candles of those time frames and ignore the market delta on the candles of the time frame that you were trading. And we're gonna place each of those delta values into a 15 period simple moving average. Now the SMA smooths out, out the, smooths out the data and allows us to knock out the outliers because, because the SMA slope is determined by that one standard deviations, whoops, excuse me, is, is determined by that one standard, one standard deviations worth of data. And the outliers are not powerful enough to change this slope. So when both 15 period SMAs off the two higher time frames are sloping up, then the bulls are firmly in control of the market and the order flow line is gonna be green. And when both 15 period SMAs are sloping down, the bears are firmly in control of the market and, and the order flow line is going to be red. And when the 15 period SMAs are not in agreement, then you're going to get a yellow line and that's a great time not to trade the market. I mean, when, when there's no market delta moving average alignment, it's going to be one way to define chop. And if we look at the mathematics of trading, if you try to trade during chop, as we all know from a practical standpoint, you're more likely to get a loser than you are to get a winner. So 
here's the analysis and we're gonna we're gonna go to a live chart I'm gonna show you and I'm gonna show you how well this works but when order flow on the two higher time frame moving averages is sloping to the upside on those two 15 period SMAs you've got an absolute direction that you have to trade all you can do is trade long any retracement you have to ignore and you have to continue to the upside now there's a brief turn to red here but as part of what we do we're going to define market structure and we are only going to trade in the direction of the trend we're never going to counter trend trade now if you want to try to counter trend trade which is right here you at least have to wait for order flow direction to change but i don't recommend ever doing it now we're we're we're, we're committed trend traders and we're, we're going to add our 15 period and our 15 period moving averages to this to this software which are both unique and they're always going to keep us on the right side of the market again when order flow based on the two higher time frame market delta moving averages are green you're going to get a rise in price and any retracement down is likely to fail now these traders are trading oscillator divergence macd divergence now i give a long lecture on why divergence signals fail so often uh, and to make it really brief um, is that they're trading these divergent signals are trading against the direction of institutional money when order flow is a line like this to the upside it's really a footprint of institutional money and if you try to fade the market on these divergent signals, you're going to run into real problems. You know, 35 years ago when George Lane first developed the oscillator, and this is really another topic, there was no institutional money and there was no computer generated trading. And look at, and trying to fade the market on divergent signals was, I believe, since I believe, although I don't have any numbers to prove it, it was probably a very successful strategy. But now with institutional money governing how far the market's going to move to the top or to the bottom, trying to trade any divergent signals is really a very, very bad strategy. And you're going to see in every long move, they're all going to, always going to be traders trying to do it. And they're almost always going to get run over. Now, why do we like these traders to do this? And why is it helpful to us? The reason it's helpful, helpful to us, and I would love to take a long trade after a, after a couple of down candles, is because it gives us the ability to trade one in the direction of institutional money and two to stop these short traders out. So we get this trade to push up in, with two forces, one money, institutional money buying more contracts or more stock um, or more forex pairs uh, and traders caught in the wrong direction getting stopped out having to buy their contracts back and helping to push this market up so we're going to leverage these these poor these these poor guys caught in the wrong direction and try to always run them over now here's just another example, um, order flow analysis, not looking at the market delta of our, move, of, of our trading chart, but the two higher time frames based on that 15 period SMA. When it's yellow, we're gonna get chop. When it's red, we're gonna get a, a move to the downside. And when it's green, we're gonna get a move to the upside. Again, we always get these counter trend trader it's just not many here caught in the wrong direction if you're not in the market you can take them you can actually take the market long right here and we're going to go over two ways to take the market long and that's going to be one of them but that that's going to come later now when market when, when order flow continues to change color now with one line you don't know you don't know how this is going to evolve but when you look back and you look at this line and you see that order flow is constantly changing hands. The bulls are in control, the bears are in control. It really does define chop. So it's really a leading indicator 
that is not driven by price on your trading chart because it doesn't look at price on your trading chart. It looks at the market delta as determined by the two higher time frames. So price is not creating this line. This line is, is being assessed and, and predicting that price is going to chop here. This is a leading assessment because it's coming off of the two higher time frames. And those two higher time frames lead price. And any analysis or data that comes off the two higher time frames is also going to lead price on your trading chart. That's what's so important about the assessment and what makes it key and what makes it a leading indicator. When it turns green, price is going to rise. And you're not going to want to trade short because you're going to get stopped out. Now, if you're having problems getting stopped out, this may be one of them. You're trading on the wrong side of, of the multi-time frame assessment of order flow, which is something that you never want to be caught in this wrong direction. Now, let me go to another slide deck. Let me switch it out. And what I'm going to do is I want to talk about the other component, major component of the system, which is going to be the, the gear. Now, I, I just I do want to do just a very, very brief uh, uh, discussion of the oscillator. And I kind of alluded to that. Um, there are lots of different types of oscillators. There's stochastic, there's relative, or there's RSI, there's, um, um, no, I'm blocking on it, but uh, um, there, there, there are many. And what they assess is they all assess momentum. And momentum is the speed of change of the price of a stock, a Forex pair, or a future. It's a second order derivation. And the last time I gave this lecture, I actually used wrong nomenclature and somebody in the trading room or somebody, somebody in the audience corrected me. I um, mean, what we're doing is um, we're looking at the rate of change of velocity. So to give you a, an example, if, if a race car is moving around the track at, say, 150 miles an hour, but it's not accelerating, its momentum is flat. It's neither increasing or decreasing. If the car is increasing in speed, 150 miles an hour, 160 miles an hour, 170 miles an hour, then its velocity is increasing over time and momentum is increasing over time. So the oscillator was created to assess the rate at which, a, at which price goes up, not the speed that the price goes up, but the rate of change of the speed. So if the price of, of, a, of an equity goes say from $1 to $10, in order for momentum to increase, it's got to, the speed with which it rises has to continue to accept, the, the speed price has to accelerate as it gets higher and higher. And that's what in all the oscillators do. They're assessing the rate of change of speed as the price goes up or the price goes down. And if there is no rate of change of speed, then there's no change in momentum. So what George Lane postulated is that this rate of change in speed is going to foreshadow reversals. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you lots of examples. So when there's divergence between price and momentum, that was going to herald a reversal in price. And let me give you an example. Um, you know, I, I went. I, I'm going. I'm going to it in a little more depth here. 
but momentum rather is the, the rate of change of a securities price. As it rises faster and faster, momentum increases. So it's the rate of change of speed or velocity. And that's a measure of momentum. Now, when momentum wanes, it's George Lane postulated that is going to happen before there's a change in price. So the the the, the rate of the, the the price of the equity continues to rise, but it's going to rise at a slower rate. So the momentum can actually be decreasing on a on a rise in price because the velocity of the rise in price, it, it's actually decelerating. Even though it's going up, it's decelerating in the rate at which it goes up. And that momentum assessment is gonna herald the collapse in price uh, of that financial instrument. I hope I made that clear. So this is the stochastic oscillator. And all of the oscillators, um, uh, RSI, Williams percent K, uh, stochastic, um, ADR, ADX, all use this basic formula. And C is the price of, uh, is, is the most recent closing price. And it's simply going to measure the distance between the most recent closing price and the 14 period average of the lows versus the 14 period average of the highs. And in a long move, if the closing price is accelerating towards the high of the move, momentum is going up. If on a short move, the close is getting closer and closer to the low of the move, then price is accelerating to the downside. And that's exactly what all the oscillators measure. And percent K is, is that assessment. And percent D, that crossover, is simply a three period moving average of percent K. So that's what an oscillator does and, and that's how it creates its calculation. And that's the information that it's telling you. Now, here's how it, the oscillator would work in a perfect market. And this is, was probably the kind of market that was, that was around in 1957 when George Lane developed this. And George Lane was a brilliant guy. Um, if, you, if you Google his name, uh, you'll find out that he did a lot of mathematical, ma mathematical work. And he was a mathematician. He was not a stock, mar a stock market guy. But he looked at the price and he looked at movement and came up with, 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 this, with the oscillator calculation. Now, he did this way back at a time when, when charts were really rudimentary. I mean, in 1957, some of us weren't born yet. And those of us that were, I'm sure you were too young to look at, uh, at uh, uh, charts. But I bet you got end of day data that went, you know, that didn't print out for a couple of days. I mean, there was just nothing around. And what he saw was that when price made up an equal high or a double top, but momentum made a lower high, which was divergence, it meant that this price moved up, but it accelerated up slower. Here it zoomed up. It went from 100 miles an hour to 175 miles an hour on this move up. Here it went from 100 miles an hour to say 120 miles an hour on this move up. Now it still went up, but went up with much less momentum. And that would be the harbinger of a collapse in price. And that momentum foreshadowed what price was going to do out into the future. And I believe in 1957, he was right on. And th this is just a, uh, a slide that I made where price makes a higher high, but momentum or the, st or the stochastic, and now you, can, you, you know that you can interchange those two terms because stochastic is just measuring momentum. Now you hear momentum is equal. So this accelerated up and this accelerated up higher at an equal rate. 
And if the price rises higher, you want it to accelerate faster. You want to get a higher high. And this also is going to herald the collapse in price. Now, here's a lower. Here's, the, here's, here's stochastic divergence or lower momentum on higher price. And you can see this is I didn't I didn't really create a great divergence failure here. But this is this is really no successful divergence signal. Price falls a little and then trends right back up. So we know now that as we trade in the uh, in our era, um, it, I, I believe the divergence is a signal you can't trade. I mean, it's it, it's going to it's going to work sometimes and it's going to fail a lot of times. And if you, if you trade that kind of a signal, you're going to go broke because you have to have a signal that reliably gives you a great entry 70 to 80 to 90 percent of the time doesn't fail sometimes and be successful others. In addition, you have to be able to assess risk on the trade. Whatever setup you're looking at, um, if you can't look at the system and be able to tell its associated risk, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be trading that system. And you can't really tell which signals are gonna work and which signals are gonna fail. I mean, it's just totally random. So trading divergence is a very, very dangerous thing. And you see all the traders that I showed you in those other moves, trading divergence of one sort or another, calling a top or a bottom, or trading off a of Fibonacci support and resistance. And I could do a whole lecture on Fibonacci, and believe me, to trade that, you're going to wind up going broke. Fibonacci never made anybody in. Fibonacci never made anyone any money. Um, so... You have to stay in the direction of institutional money and in, in the direction of the trend. So in a perfect environment where George Lane existed back in 1957, when you, when you got a move of the stochastic line above the 20 line, relieving the oversold conditions, got an up arrow, and the instrument's going to trade up. Here's a failed short. And here's a successful short where you get the stochastic line crossing below the 80 line, relieving overbought conditions. And here's the stochastic going to the upside. It's telling you momentum is rising and it's and the speed of the instrument. The speed with which the instrument is moving up in price is, excelling, is, is getting faster and faster. And we're going to take a trade to the upside. And here was, we don't know how this traded because we're, we're too far off the right edge. But it was, it was really a brilliant indicator. And the reason he bounded it was because once it traded above 80 or below 20, and once it hit zero or it hit 100, you really didn't know, you really didn't have to know any more data. You knew that momentum was to the upside and locked or to the downside and locked. And it's the only bounded indicator in trading that's really useful. And I've created an unbounded stochastic, and I've seen them in open source, and they really don't give you any more information than this bounded stochastic does. Now, here's what happens more commonly today, and that stochastic goes overbought, and you're looking to fade it if you are, and it just keeps going up. And I'm going to tell you the rules that, that I recommend now to use to trade stochastic and one of the really one of the foundational uh, set of rules that we use to trade the system I'm going to show you and that is back when oscillators were developed there was little institutional volume in the market so again we go back to the power of every buyer approximately equal to the power of every seller now when that was the case a divergent signal just like a Japanese candlestick top or a doji was, was a very good signal. Um, it, it meant a lot. This is no longer true. Institutional volume now dominates and determines the direction of price. It's not stochastic and it's not Japanese candlestick um, formations. They're gonna get run over. 
and the, and, and the era of institutional volume, there's no such thing as overbought or oversold. This is, an, this is absolutely a fallacy. Um, markets reverse direction at the whim of institutional money only. And I'm sure everybody who's traded has seen crude start way down below the 50 and then just move up six, seven, eight points. Multiple traders try to feed it at different spots and it's move up. And it just never starts, stops going up on high volume. That's because as long as the institutional money is going to push that instrument long, it is going to go long. And there just isn't any mathematical top that we can assess using an oscillator or anything else for that matter. Now, we, it is important to note that re reversion to the mean is still a very powerful force. I mean, price still wants, you know, it's like a rubber band. The farther you pull it away from the mean price, and the mean prices can be can be what you define it. It can be the point of control. It can be a 50 period moving average, which is which is what we use, because it's the mean price of the of the uh, instrument going back 50 candles. So price wants to pull back to that mean, but that concept has been skewed, and price is not going to pull back until the institutional traders step aside. Now, the farther it's been pushed away from the mean by the institutional traders, the faster it'll snap back to the mean. The problem that we have is we don't know when they're gonna step aside. And believe me, nobody does. Everybody tries to figure it out. But you can see a, a drop off in volume, a small retracement, and then they come right back and push that thing up another 25 or 30 ticks. So you can never really be sure exactly when the institutional traders are done moving that instrument. And it's not till they totally step aside that the price is gonna come back and snap back to the mean. So trading divergence is really tantamount to trading against the flow of institutional money. It's, it's gonna do nothing but bleed your account. And the only thing you can do is, is have a trading methodology that tries to get you into a trade as early as possible in the direction of money flow or institutional money. Never look to fade it. Always look to trade with it. And what we want to do is create indicators that allow us to track the footprint of institutional money. And I see you know, all kinds of webinars talking about tracking the flow of institutional money, but it is very hard to do. It's not simple. And it really, really takes a sophisticated analysis. And it's not gonna happen um, based on uh, examining Japanese candlestick patterns. Now, price action is really helpful, but it is no longer the linchpin of tracking institutional money flow. So which indicator most accurately assesses buying and selling pressure, completely ignoring any potential divergence signal? That's what we want to use. And with it, you're indirectly following the, the footprint of big money. Now, the RSI, uh, Stochastic, and Williams K are all divergence-based indicators. They were created to look for divergence to allow you to counter trend trade the market. So they are not optimal trading instruments to use. And you really do, it's going to help you if you trade with an oscillator, but you can't use those. Because just like George Lane wanted to use his uh, stochastic purely for divergent signals, the RSI and Williams K are the same way. If you look at their formula, they're just variations of stochastic. And they're created to trade divergence. And we can't trade divergence. We're going to get beaten up. The Laguerre is the only oscillator that's used to keep you in the direction of the trend. Now, it has a gamma factor, which we have modified, and multiple filters to determine its final value. And it still compares 
the um, the high of the move with the close, the low of the move with the close. It's still looking for the same parameters, but it does it in a different way. And it does it in a way not to create a divergent signal, but to create a trend-based signal to tell, to tell you the direction of momentum. Now, here's a Laguerre signal, and this is our modified Laguerre. And we've really made a lot of adjustments and, and changes in this, in this Laguerre. It's not, an, it's not a standard open source indicator anymore. Now the yellow line is called fractal energy. I left that in there, but I'm going to take it out. It's it, it what it is is it's a um, it's a volatility based index to try to tell you when you're going to get a big move in the market, and when it rises, it tells you there's the potential for a larger move. It's inaccurate, and it just doesn't work. So I, hopefully, I took it out, but I may not have. And if I didn't, just don't worry about that yellow line. There's no signal line here. There's only the gear line. And what we've done is, is, is created this analysis. When the gear line crosses the 20 line and prints above the 20 line, the system creates this up arrow. Now you're gonna get this up arrow intracandle. So you're gonna know it's gonna occur and if you're in a, the correct position, you're, you're going to take a buy stop, one tick above the close of this candle. This is a system generated arrow based upon the crossing of the Laguerre and the 20 line. And then we have the Laguerre bar. Now, what every other oscillator looks to do is when the market's overbought and creates this green line, they look for divergence for you to fade it. But we look is to stay in long because we believe that institutional money has created so much buying pressure here that the market is just going to continue to rise on a gear that's locked to the upside. And you can see this is a this is a 30 minute of the queues. So you can trade any instrument on any time frame. Even though I, I use Unirenko, I wanted to create um, different entries on different time frames. So you can see, at, at, you can see, it doesn't matter what you trade. These are uni universal forces that move any financial instrument on any time frame. So you get the arrow. You can take it long here. Now you can exit on the down signal where the Laguerre falls below, below the 80 line, or you can exit on a break of support. It really depends on your risk tolerance. And remember right now with this slide, I'm not giving you a trading methodology. I'm only giving you a trading direction. And the trading direction here is long only. We're never looking to fade the market on a cross of the Laguerre across the 80 line to take this short signal. When we're above the 50, we only trade long. When we're below the 50, we only trade short. So any short signal is simply an exit signal if we want to take it out of the trade. If we're not in a trade, we ignore it. Here's another trade. There's the Laguerre arrow, intracandle. Plenty of time to take it to the downside. The Laguerre crosses the 80 line to the downside. Momentum is, is really pushing down hard. And you can see the move. The Laguerre locks short all along here. And, you know, old ancient wisdom would be when this is locked down, we're going to look for a counter trend move up. We're going to ride this down. We can exit on the up arrow or exit on a break of resistance. This is a 60 minute of the queue. Here is a daily queue. There's the arrow. There's the move up. Then you can exit on a down arrow or you can exit on a break of support. Either one. Now you're still gonna make good money if you enter here. Now, I kind of highlighted this a little bit more 
um, here's a short signal with the Laguerre crossing. Um, now I move from stocks to futures. This is crude. And you can see you get your oscillator cross of the 80 line, the signal short, and the lock, and down you go. The arrow is your exit signal. It is not your signal to take a counter trend trade. We never counter trend trade. No long trades below the 50. Here's your next exit entry short on the cross of the Laguerre down across the 80 line. It heads down. The Laguerre locks short. So we're very confident that institutional money is pushing this trading, is pushing this market to the short side. When the Laguerre closes up above the uh, 20 line, there's the arrow. You can exit the trade. We're never going to take the entry, this entry long. We don't counter trend trade. We do not trade long below the 50. Now here, I want to just quickly compare the Laguerre like, signals. And in this particular case, we're looking at stochastic. Now remember, stochastic was created in order to give you divergent signals. Now, the, here's the stochastic entry right here. It's two candles earlier than the gear, which is gonna give you, there's the arrow right there. So you don't even have to look at the gear for most of the time. Very rarely do you need to look at it. Just watch the arrows and watch the bar. The arrow is gonna give you the direction it's moving. You can, you can glance down at it. But here's the importance of the way we've created the gear. We've created to give it stability so that these, this candle up and these two candles up, keep the Laguerre locked down and keep this line red all the way through the move. There's no up arrow here. And there's your up arrow. Doesn't occur till all the way over here. On stochastic, you cross the 20 line right here. And you're out of the trade almost immediately because stochastic was not created to keep you in a trend. It's looking for divergence. So if you're looking for stochastic to keep you in the trend, it's going to do an awful job. And it's the same thing. Whoops. Now it's the same thing with other, with a lot of, with, um, I don't have the slide here, but it's the same thing with RSI. And it's the same thing with Williams K. They're going to bounce you out of the trade. So now we're going to combine the two. We're going to combine order flow and we're going to combine the Laguer signal. I'm going to show you the trades and then we'll move to the live charts. Now there's two kinds of um, entries that you can take. Now the first line here is order flow. And you need to have order flow in your direction when you're trading. And you also must have the Laguerre in your direction when you're trading. So here's a Laguerre arrow giving you an entry. Now you just check the direction of order flow, which is green. You're going to enter on the Laguerre signal long. And you're going to get a really nice long trade. Now the now. Entry number two, and I spelled it wrong, excuse me, um, is a pullback without a Laguerre signal into a dual green. You have the Laguerre lock long, you have order flow green, any pullback is likely to continue. So you can enter on the arrow, which is almost the inception of the trade, or enter on a pullback on dual green and both have a high probability win rate. Now here's another signal. This is entry number two. This is, you don't get the inception with the arrow and I purposely want to show you different, want, different entries. You get the move down, you get the pullback. These are the unfortunate traders, counter trend trading. There's your move back into the trend in the direction of the Laguerre, lock short, 
and a direction of money flow, which is order flow right here. This is a very low risk, high reward trade with both of these two derivations in your direction and the Laguerre lock short. That's entry number two. Here's entry number one, the arrow. So you get across of the Laguerre line, across the 80 line. It's in the direction of order flow and you're in all the way down. You don't get an up arrow till right here. And that's, that would potentially take you out of the trade. Here's another entry. And here, this is, again, entry number two. The break, the pullback, the continuation short. We're never going to go long here. We're only going to go short. We're just looking for a, a bunch of traders trading in the wrong direction to sort of leverage them uh, and help and, and use them to help us guarantee this is going to continue short. We've got order flow. This is a multi time frame assessment. Um, looking at the two higher time frames and the Laguerre, which in and of itself, as a momentum based indicator, leads the market. And as long as it's down below the 20 line and locked short, you've got institutional money in your direction with both of these indicators and you're going to go short. Now, here's, a, here's, I didn't mark it, but this is number one. There's the arrow. This is crude. There's the Laguerre line crossing the 20. This, this is not an arrow I, I drew on here. This is an arrow that occurred in your candle and printed on the chart by the software. And you, your entry is one tick above the close. And, can ride this up all the way. And if you have no trade management strategy, i.e., you take, you know, for us, we take, um, we take our trades out at 15 ticks. That's all we're looking for on a move. On the NASDAQ, we're looking for seven and a half points. And we get seven and a half points right out of the trade. Um, but if you're just going to let this ride and try to get your runner to go as far as possible, then you're going to go out on the down arrow. I'm not trying to give you a trading methodology. I'm giving you an entry tool to get into this into the trade in the direction of institutional money, which is why we only go long above the 50 when the 15 is above the 50 and short below the 50 when the 15 is below the 50. And you're going to get the 15 and the 50. Now, let me just tell you really quickly about the 50. The 50 is a 50 EMA of a 50 EMA. Now, by taking the calculation twice, what we've done is created a moving average that has the speed of an EMA and the stability of an SMA. The 15 is really a remarkable line. Um, I, I can put uh, uh, just a standard 15 EMA up against our 15 EMA of a 15 EMA, which we then run through a, a formula. This is much more stable, yet just as fast. So it's a very, very unique line. Now you're also going to get the pivot indicator. And I want to talk about that briefly, but I'm not, uh, uh, let, me, let me continue with, the, with these slides. Now, what I wanted to do is give you one slide that showed you both types of entries in the same slide. Now, here's a pullback on crude to support with dual green. And you've got, a, you've got an entry right here, one tick above to the upside. This is a very high probability, low risk winner because you've still got green, green, and you're trading above support. Here is trade number one, the oscillator entry. You've got the move of the oscillator, or, or I'm sorry, the, the gear line across the 20. The arrow is going to flicker, give you time to put your buy stop in. And remember, if this doesn't close to the upside, the hour will disappear, the candle will collapse, and the trade is canceled. That's all. But nothing ever repaints. If this candle closes to the upside, this will print. And if the move goes nowhere, you're going to see a loser on the trade. I mean, you see this down candle? It printed. It's a counter trend trade right into support. 
And if you took it, it would have given you a big loser, which is why we only trade in the direction of the trend long above the 50. Now, here's the offer. I don't want to really go into that because really, what, what I want to do now is just show you some trades on a live chart. And then I'll answer questions. Then I'll show you the offer and I'll answer any questions. Now, here's a live chart. And let me just talk to you briefly about the pivots. The pivots on most indicators are wrong. And we've, got, we've done an enormous amount of work on our pivot indicator. And we base our pivot indicator on Japanese candlestick dogma, which in this case is 1,000% right. A pivot is created not off of a wick. It's created off of a candle body right here. And it's easy to create a pivot indicator that trades off a wick. Because it's easy to code. But this is not where all the buyers sit. They're sitting here. And you see on this move down, every time this pivot's approached, it bounces. The pivot's approached, it bounces. This is not quite approached. But remember that the pivot is not a line. It's an area. So if you can see a pivot pretty close to the trade, you don't want to take it. Now, if the pivot was all the way down here, you might have taken these trades short, this trade short, this trade short. But this is really not where the buyers are. This is where the buyers are. Now, when you get a high pivot, it's right here at the candle body. I mean, there's, lot, there's more complex formations. This is called a dual bull failure on both these wicks. This is a very, very low probability counter trend trade, which I don't take anyway, although I, I'm just showing it to you to note it. Um, we've got two counter trend signals, which we never trade. And... If I'm, I, what I want to do is I want to demonstrate the pivot again. Right here on this down trade, right here. Now this is a trade we really can't take because we've got the gear against us. But right here on this pullback, we've got, now, see, we don't have this trade. Now, it's not always going to align for us. If we want to get 100% of the winners, we're going to pull in a significant amount of the losers. Here, order flow has turned briefly green. We can't take this trade short. Now, here's where I want to show it to you, right here. Now, this is a trade two. It's a continuation trade. Now, you've got the same trade here. This is a trade number two. It's a continue. Actually, it's, it's almost a trade one. Right off the gear arrow. But... Japanese candlestick dogma tells us that the break of a pivot occurs when two thirds of a candle body closes below it. So we're going to let this entry go and we're going to trade that number one trade right here. This candle breaks the pivot and down it goes. It's not a, it's not a huge move if you're out on an up candle, but it's, but it's a legitimate move. And this is what takes out all the buyers. And this is going to move down with really nice authority. Then you get a pullback. And you get your number two move. Continuation trade all the way down. In the direction of order flow and the lock Laguerre. Now, if you're thinking you're going to get every single winning trade, then you're also going to get lots of losing trades. They're going to be really nice trades. Like this is a trade I really want to take. But on the right edge, I'd be worried order flow is not in my direction. And I'm not going to take the trade. That's trading with discipline. Most of these trades are not going to work. But the trades that you do take are going to have at least an 80% probability of being successful. And look what happens on the short signal into a pivot. Blows right up and changes direction. 
So the pivots are really key. Now here's your oscillator entry. And this is this is simply a variant. I'm going, I'm, I'm, this is really stuff that, we, we, that I would teach you if you come aboard. But when you get an oscillator entry into a pivot, it's called trading around the pivot. Got to wait for the pivot break. And here you go. And you're trading in the direction of order flow. And you're trading in the direction of the Ligier. And so you have yourself a really nice short trade. And you saw how many trades hit the pivot and bounce. You simply trade the break. And I'll tell you, these pivot breaks fire down because there's always residual buyers and you carry them with you and they all get stopped out and the trade gets pushed to the downside. So I've gone into a lot of detail, but basically there's essentially trade number one, the Ligier Arrow, trade number two, a pullback with a continuation into a red, red signal on both the Ligier and order flow. And the only third thing you have to take into account is you want to trade around the pivot, not into it, short below the 50 in the 15, long above the 50 in the 15, and your win percentage is going to be exceedingly high. So right here is a trade, right here. The order flow on the candle is red. It immediately turns green. And it's just too tight to this pivot. You can't be looking at these pivots. It's, it's really telling you avoid them. Price hits here, bounces up, and this green, or the positive delta, was sort of your cue that you're getting in trouble here because now there's buying pressure on the market. It's coming in from the pivot. Bounce, move down, hits, and up it goes. So this whole formation, looking right into this pivot, goes nowhere and never breaks it. So we just stay away from the times they break. And you sit there and you're like, oh man, we, we, just, we just let a 30 tick trade go. But you avoid multiple, multiple losers. You trade around accurate pivots. And these are accurate pivots that only break on two-thirds, this is the break, that two-thirds candle body below, here there's no pivot, here there's no pivot, here there's no pivot. This little piece below the pivot did not break it, continued to trace. I can pull all this chunk off, you see, you see, it pulled on it. So this is a very, very, very unique pivot indicator, and we're including that. So let me give you the offer, and then and then I'll answer any questions that you have. I look at any financial instrument. Um, these are universal forces that govern the movement of price, and it doesn't really make any difference what you're looking at or what time frame. Now, I called it the uh, the three line um, when I set it up. But it's really not, because there aren't three lines. It's really the little gear uh, trend V2 system. And that's how we're going to post it to our website. Now we're going to now we're normally going to charge 199 because it's a great system, complete system. It's a complete entry system. You're going to get great entries off of it. And for the special, it's going to be 699 for a lifetime license and free upgrades. You're going to get a month in the trading room with me. If you have any doubt about how to trade it, you're going to see in the room. I never trade against the direction of order flow. I never trade against the direction of the gear. I look for the gear entries, and I take a lot of number twos, a lot of pullbacks and continuations with my gear lock short and order flow red. And these trades work. We made $1,100 on Thursday and Friday, just trading just a tiny number on the Friday. We were done in 25 minutes after the market opened, like five minutes after 10. I started at 9 o'clock, but there was really nothing pre-market. Um, you get the pivot. Only the first five orders get the pivots. Now, I don't know if this is the right URL, so let me just take that out. 
It may be, it may not be. Um, right line, www.routlandtraining.com forward slash special offer. Um, Rory will, will, will send out a link. And the offer expires on Wednesday, uh, March 6th at midnight. So here's our phone number, 786-713-5276. Rory's on the phone. If you want to call him, he'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, it's a really, really excellent system, and one that we've just developed. And it's a great way of leveraging order flow and Laguerre. The Laguerre is a great momentum assessment, and it's better than any other. That's why the, os the, the old oscillator and MACD are gone. We've replaced them with the Laguerre. So let me see if there are any questions. I'll be happy to answer them. Hold on one second here. Okay, hang on. Let me just drag this across. Okay, hold on. There are a lot of questions, and I'll be, but I'll go, I'll get through them. Hey guys, hey, good morning, good morning, Joe. Uh, your multi time frame Laguerre uh, bar does not work on my. Okay, listen, any any things like that. We'll, we'll fix. I'm not going to, you know, I don't want to go into, um, at, at this hour, Steve, go into any um, problems. Sergio will, will take care of anything that, you, anything that you have. A Unirenko differs from a regular Renko, Christopher, in huge ways. A regular Renko produces a brick. And if I put up a Renko chart here, now, just notice here that you've got wicks. Now, let me ask you, uh, let me ask you a quick question, and, and I think this is um, really important for everyone to know. In order for an oscillator to work, including the Laguerre, it doesn't make any difference what oscillator it is, you have to have four parameters. You have, you have to have the open of the candle, the close of the candle, you have to have the high of the candle, and you have to have the low of the candle. You don't have those four parameters. The oscillator cannot figure out momentum because it's comparing the close with the low and the close with the high on the differing moves. Now we have wicks. You don't need a wick on every candle, but you need wicks in order for the oscillator to function. If you look at Renko, Renko has no wicks, and it's really kind of sad because I see really, really expensive software trading an oscillator with, a, with Renko, but this is just a bogus line. All it is is tracing price. It's, it's tracking price. It is not making an accurate assessment, and you see how it's just bumping every time price bumps? Because there's no wicks. So it's lacking the data it requires to create the Laguerre line. So you can't trade a Renko with any oscillator. And if you're doing it, the oscillator is not working. So that's the reason. And that's the big deal. You need to have wicks. Obviously, time, uh, tick, range, they're all fine. Uh, and that's why Unirenko is fine, but you cannot trade Renko. Let me just make these thicker. All right, back to where we were. Okay. All right, let me keep going here. Jonathan. Yeah, we're st we are doing all of that, Jonathan, and don't worry about that. Why do you constantly? Here, well, Brian, listen. I want to give I want to give traders a background. I mean, it's all well and good to 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 focus in on. Um, how we trade the oscillator and why the oscillator that we use is, is important uh, and why our trading methodology is, is important. 
But if you don't have a background about how the oscillator was used in the past, I think it provides context and um, validity. So um, Brian was just saying, why go back and talk about the indicator? Um, uh, I, I mean, I, don't, I mean, he's calling it esoteric practices and I respect what he says, but I think those practices are important for us as traders now in 2019 to understand or else we don't, we really can't figure out where we are and what we're doing and why we're doing it. I mean, I just don't want to come on here and say, this is how you trade and this is our methodology. I want to provide you with, a, a, you know, an evolutionary process because that's what I see other people do on other webinars. They come out, they tell you, here's the entry. This is how we take it. This is how we trade. And this is what works. Well, why? So I'm trying to put everything in context. That's all, Brian. Well, listen, I want to get, I, I, obviously that's really important to me, but I want you to understand why the way we trade is so important. That's all. I want to put everything that we do in context. Um, it's just that simple. We, we can add alerts for you, John. The automated system will be out very shortly, Christopher. We're in the process of adding the gear to the automated system. Ron, it depends upon the, vol the volatility of the instrument and the speed of the instrument. Crude has a little bit less volatility than the Dow and the NASDAQ. So we've optimized the settings on all the Unirenko. Like you wouldn't trade, say, the NASDAQ on a one minute. Maybe you trade the NASDAQ on a three minute. Maybe you trade the NASDAQ on a 610 tick and you trade crude on maybe a 244 tick. I mean, you don't trade every single instrument with on the same time frame. And we're doing the same thing. Our E-mini is a 428 because it has even less volatility. So every single instrument, just like with, with the Forex, every Forex pair has its own unique setting based on our, its volatility, looking back one year at, the, at its average true range. That's what's going to get you its best entries, get you in as fast as you can, and be able to milk that trade for as much money as you possibly can. Uh, and that's why we have different settings, Christopher. I'm sorry, Ron. Yes, Phil, the pivots on the Forex charts are exactly the same. They are right at the candle body. That's where the buyers are, are heading, are, are sitting. And we have and we have pivots for, for the uh, for the um, for the Forex, which I'm seriously considering trading at night. Uh, I'm one hair away from committing suicide and getting up at 2 a.m. Eastern to trade the Forex. Hey, David, thank you. You're gonna get, you know what? Rory comes in about eight o'clock in the morning. You'll get it an hour before the room opens, David. Okay? So you, you'll, you'll, get your, you'll, get, you'll get your credentials. You'll be in on Monday morning, okay? We do have David, and Rory will talk to you about that, okay? I'm not focusing on that here. I, I'm not going to go into it, but we do. And you will be in. You will be in the room on Monday morning. We'll get. We will get you in. Just stand by around eight, eight fifteen, eight thirty, and you'll get your credentials. Thank you so much, Albert. I have bought Legear already in Forex bundle last year. How much? Um, it's really not part of the update, Albert. But you're going to get a significant discount. A significant discount. Um, uh, just contact Rory and he'll tell you, you're going to get a big uh, percentage off. A significant discount, John, if you I'm not sure what you're talking about specifically, um, whether you're talking about this system, but you will, if, I mean, I mean, if you own the full system or the three line, thank you so much, David. Oh, listen, David, that was my pleasure to talk to you. 
you're a really, really nice guy. And I, I really enjoyed uh, our conversation. And I mean, I mean, my, my goal is when you come aboard is we want to make, we want to make you money. Less, you should have that. Just give us a call and we'll send it to you. It's plot number uh, one, Larry. Number one. It, well, you know, this is better, Wouter. This is better. Um, the combination of the gear and order flow makes for a much, much more powerful system. And that's what we're looking to do. As time passes, we're always looking to improve what we get and improve the power of our trading system. I mean, I, you know, that's one of our goals and our mandate is not to sit and just, you know, trade with the same thing we traded with 10 years ago. I know the NDT this week, Heinz. David, in this particular package, it's not included. I mean, that's the, you're talking about the full system. It worked with Arnold. It's going to, it's going to work on NT7 and NT8. It's not going to work on every system on all platforms. If you're on thinkorswim, you're, you're great because thinkorswim will power this. Um, but if you're on say E-Trade or, or um, uh, you can still use it on a demo and take the signals off of it on on your actual live platform but it's only going to work on seven and eight that's the only thing that we're going to have it available for i mean it's so hard we're, we're, we're close to, on sierra we want to get it to an uh, uh, metatrader so it's not active on every platform. and i should have mentioned that thanks for asking me that Don, because you you know that's that, it, it's a great question. I, I you know I do trade it, um, but it's also you know um, why you know why not? I'll tell you the honest truth. And you know I, and I've just been offered like a, like a block amount of money where I'm going to be trading about a quarter of a million dollar account live in the trading room. So irrespective of that, you know we still have the company. It's made for NT7 or NT8, um, Ricardo. But you can take the signals off of it from a demo and trade it on any other platform. If you're on Thinkorswim, Thinkorswim will power it. Steven, I don't know. I'm still waiting for Gary. Gary is still recovering. Uh, I mean, you know he's, under, he's, going, he's undergoing chemotherapy. I mean, he's still not done with it. So um, the jury's out because it, it all depends upon his, the success with it and his recovery time. I'm in touch with Gary and right now Gary's got other problems and he's not skirting the room. He's a really great guy. He wants to trade at two or three o'clock in the morning Eastern. He just got sidelined by a really, really bad uh, medical problem. Um, he is, he's out there. Hey, thank you, Brian. Always, Jim, I always put in protective stops. My stop is always a reversal candle. Whatever I'm trading, if I get a reversal, I want to, I want to get out of the trade. Um, some traders take bigger risk, but I think that that's the most prudent way to do it. I mean, if, if the market gives us, if we're trading short, we get an up candle, that up candle will close the trade. If we're trading long and we get a down candle for me, that down candle closes the trade. Um, some traders take more risk and some, if you take less risk, I think it's a mistake. But that's, that, that's I think, basic market structure, uh, uh, automated trade management strategy, and I think it will work really well for you. Uh, oh, and in addition, you've got to set targets. Now, we'll give you the targets um, based upon our uh, analysis of, um, of um, the volatility of the instrument, where to take your first target, where to take your second, and if you want, where to take your third. 
So you may not get the whole move, but this is an unusually big move. And your entry is right here on the pivot breaker. It's a perfect short right here. And this trade goes, your entry is here. A full excursion is 52 ticks. Now those are unusual. So you're not gonna get all 52 based on an automated trade management strategy. I mean, likely you're gonna take your third target out at 20. But here's the thing, you've got a pullback here to this wick and a re-entry. So if you want, you can just reload and go short again. This is still a number two trade. You get your pullback wick, red, red, and you're down for a second. So this could be a five or 600. This could easily be a five or $600 move and take you out for the day, depending upon what your profit targets are. So we're gonna give you all that information. That's correct. On two, 80% of these trades are gonna work. They're very, very uh, high probability wins. The only caveat is don't trade them into a pivot. If you see a pivot anywhere around, just do not take the trade. Those pivots are killer pivots. And I, I mean, they demolish more trade than anything I've ever seen. I call this trade free and clear. The pivot's up here, you broke it, and now you've got a, a run all the way down. That's a beautiful setup and configuration and a very high percentage win rate. I mean, these are the kind of trades we, we really long for um, because they're so, they're so great. It is being recorded, Mikey. We're gonna add it, Brian. Right now we don't have it on, um, on uh, 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 NT7, but we're gonna add that on, uh, and that's gonna come with it. Correct, that's correct, James. No, 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 we will never forget you guys, Jonathan. Come on, do we ever? We never do. Thank you, Albert. Great indicator. Okay. okay. It's gonna it's gonna be a, a huge discount to you, Albert. A huge a huge discount. And we're still thinking about how much of a discount. It may it may be an, an enormous one. Okay. Don't worry about that. Thank you, David. Thank you, Ron. Uh, Gary, you know, I mean, he's you know he's getting immunotherapy. He's not getting that really toxic chemotherapy, Ron. And, uh, but it's still knocking the heck out of him. So uh, he's got to get three months of chemotherapy. And what he's got is potentially lethal disease. So, I mean, I just have to wait for him. I, I can't press him because, I mean, obviously trading is important to him, but, I, I, you know, he's got a family and stuff. So there's just so much I can say. I just got to, I just got to wait. Of course, Ron, each instrument has its own settings and all of those settings are provided, including the automatic trade management strategy. I mean, we wanna give you as much information as we can to get you profitable. So all the inputs for the Unirenko settings, the trade management strategy are recommended, first target, second target, third target, and we do all the work for you. Sergio will configure the whole system you tell him how many contracts you trade, he's gonna put the automated trade management strategy in for you, but it's always your, a bit, you always have the ability to tweak it. We're gonna give you our recommended trade management strategy, which very, very few, um, uh, you know, software come with that. They sell it to you, they give you an entry, and then you're off, then you're on your own. I mean, we're gonna give you the whole soup to nuts and tons of education. In the trading room, I mean, I spend, if I trade for an hour, I talk after the room is over, and the, there's a lot of traders here who are in the room, we talk for at least an hour afterwards. 
I mean, we go over the trades. We go over the trades I didn't take. We look at the E-mini. We look at other markets. We look at all the entries. Um, I always look at potential trades I missed. I mean, we really have a big time educational experience. On Friday, I went over the statistics of trading. I told I taught everyone how to do a chi-square analysis, um, how to look at statistical significance, all the things that are important for you to evaluate software packages and your ability to trade versus another trader. Just because your win percentage is 61% and his win percentage is 59% doesn't statistically make you a better trader. And I showed all that doing chi-square analysis. We spent an hour doing, um, doing statistics that I learned back in college in statistics and linear algebra. And it was, re it was really enlightening for a lot of people. So we do a lot of teaching. Yes, you can, Lou. You can. Thank you, Phil. Uh, Phil, I'm telling you, if I if I if I if I take my vitamins, I am chomping at the bit for a 2 a.m. forex room. I can't swear to it. I don't want to make a promise. I, you know, I'm not positive. I'm going to keep, but I'm I think about it all the time. I tra I did a forex room a year and a half ago. It was really successful, but then I had to close it because of exhaustion. But I think I can handle it. So let's, we'll, we'll see them. I'm, I'm thinking about it very seriously. And I really mean that. Oh, God bless you too. Thank you so much. Oh, you fell asleep on the couch, Al. Al just says, I fell asleep on the couch and just woke up. Are you recording this? Yes, Al. I pass out all the time too. So I completely uh, empathize with you. Thank you so much, Gus. Jonathan, just send us an email. Um, it may, we may make it. We're, we're, I'm not really sure, but just just let us know. Yeah, it's the same louder. You can receive two, David. We'll give you two machine IDs. We'll we'll we always we always just routinely um, we'll make it active for you on two computers. A lot of people have a desktop and a laptop, and we've gotten so many requests for a second. That we just, you know, if, if you give us two machine IDs, we'll activate and configure the program on two computers for you. Not a problem. Um, Richard, uh, I appreciate you want to come aboard. Um, if Rory's there, he's going to put a link in the room. If you don't have a link in the room, we're going to we're going to be sending you an offer um, on on a uh, you know a formal offer via email very very shortly, and you you're welcome to, you know you're welcome to come aboard there, um, and I appreciate it. Absolutely, Arnold. I didn't have enough time. L listen, stocks move with in, with are moved by the same forces that move uh, forex and move futures. They move on momentum. They move on order flow. They will. This will work on stocks just as effectively as anything else. On stocks, we have to give you a lot of information. You have to tell us what stocks you want to trade. We have to give you the Unirenko settings. We have to give you the, the automated trade management strategy. We'll do that for you um, for a large basket of stocks, but it absolutely does. If I had time, I would have showed you the cues. The cues and the spy trade tra trade great with this. And if they trade well, you can trade any stock really well. And remember, you can take a much longer term time frame. This is a day trading input. We can give you a swing trading input if you like. It take a much longer time frame trade. Remember, I showed you a half hour queues, an hour queue, a daily queue um, on the slides. So um, if you want to swing trade, it'll work for that too. And you know what, Ricardo? It's almost ready because I know it's been a pain and everyone's been patient, but we just added a new indicator, which is the multi time frame Laguerre. Now Sergio has to program it in. When we release that auto, I want it to be the best auto of all time. I want it to take accurate trades and have a precision of 80% or greater. And I'm telling you, you're going to be rewarded because we're adding this indicator now. It's going to be very short. 
time frame to release. Hopefully, I'm hoping NT8 next week. And then we're going to blow that auto trader out. But I want to add this indicator. So I, I, it's my fault for, with Sergio, because every time we're ready to go, I add something. But this addition is going to make it much, much more likely that we get a winner. So that's really, you know, my philosophy. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you. So, thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. You're a really smart guy, uh, Mark. Sure, Scott. If you send us an email, I can. Uh, I'll ask someone if they mind if they mind uh, being called. I can give you three people, easy, um, who trade and make a one ton of money um, on the system. Not a problem. Just send me an email. I'll have to talk to them. Uh, I don't think they're going to mind you calling because they send me their JPEGs every day, and the, and and they put their profit total in the room. So not a problem. Lou, um, I, you know, I, I honestly don't know, don't know what to tell you. Um, either way, it's going to work for you, honestly. Um, if, you, if you're never going to trade live ever, uh, then you don't need it. But if you're going to trade live even 60 days out, it may be worth it. Um, I'll tell you that. Um, and if he gave you that price for the auto, he gave you a really cheap price. I'll tell, I'll tell you that. I, that's all I can say. Thank you so much, James. We'll do it, Richard. Um, I mean, you can call Rory right now. Get, let me give you his, his number. It's right here. 786-713-5276. And, and Rory can pick up and take the order for you, uh, Ricardo. Um, right there. Um, just call me in the afternoon, Steve. Mark, I don't agree with that. Um, I think that, like on Friday, we had two full winners on the NQ. They both went 10 points. We made 275 a trade, and we were out 275, 275. 550. Now, the thing is, here's the thing, Mark. If 10, if 50% of their profit come from 10% of their trades, they have an awful lot of commissions because they're getting a lot of trades that are not are either break even or unsuccessful. I mean, our goal is to take under 12 or 13 trades a week. So if we're going to look to make a thousand dollars a week after commissions. We have to have our win rate very high. So it seems to me that I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna scalp, then maybe yes, 50% will come from 10% of your trades. But if you're gonna trade the way we do, we want to keep your commissions low. I don't see that metric working. I mean, based upon what we get in the NDT, you know, in our control center, um, you know, we we try to take 15 trades a week and that's it, uh, three trades a day, and we're looking for a thousand bucks after commission. We make 1,500. That's even better. But that's not going to work with those numbers, Mark. But those are big guys. Those are prop traders. So, I mean, you know, I don't know how they're trading. But for us small guys, those, those are not great numbers. Thank you so much, Len. Uh, that's that work, Steve. You're using CL data for natural gas. Len, I don't know. I would think natural gas has its own data feed, but I honestly can't tell you. Uh, I mean, if I don't know, I'd rather say I don't know, okay? Very shortly, Daniel, very, very, very shortly. Okay, I, we're, we're gonna do it, Richard. Ricardo, I'm sorry. I, well, I've got it and we're gonna, we're gonna do it. You know what, David? I traded the DAX for a long time. 
Um, our entries are stellar, but I'll, let me tell you a DAX problem, which is, is slippage. It moves at a thousand miles an hour. And I was getting five and six ticks of slippage on a trade. And I, the, the, I love the DAX because it's 12 and a half euros a tick, which is more money than the E-mini. And yet it, it has, I mean, it makes 30 and 40 tick moves like nothing. The only problem with the DAX is you're going to have to deal with a lot of slippage. And, you know, there are other traders who, who worked on the DAX too. They've abandoned it simply because it trades so fast that you're going to probably get slippage on every entry. I did. And my first target was seven ticks. I sometimes got six ticks of slippage. So I'm one tick away from my first target on my entry. And I really have to go another six ticks. So it's very tough to trade. You get great entries, but, but slippage tends to really burn you. So that's my only caveat on the DAX, David. You can get in and not get slippage. It's a cash cow. But if you get in with slippage, it's a, it, it really can be a nightmare. That's the only reason I don't trade it. I like it. And it's very lucrative. I mean, 12 and a half euros is more than 12 and a half bucks. So I, I, and it's got, you know, it's a great dollar figure. And the reason the for, Forex at 2 a.m. is so good, Steve, is it's, it's, it's the only market available in the whole world to trade. The New York Stock Exchange is closed. Um, everything is closed. You can't trade crude. You can't trade uh, gold. There's no volume. You have all the traders in um, Asia, you know, Singapore. Um, uh, they have nothing to trade but the Forex. The European Forex session at 2 a.m. is a very high volume Forex period. And that's the only thing they got all their money to trade. And that, that's what they, that is what they focus on. I, you, know, you know what, Steve, I would be happy to tell you if you send me an email. I just don't want to put, you know, we're, I'm already running 42 minutes over. Um, listen, almost any pound cross and almost any euro cross is going to do really well at night. Um, because, you know, the, the, all of Europe is trading and Australia is trading and, and Asia is trading. And they tend, they tend to pound out. They tend to pound on the euro and the pound. And, and the uh, British, you know, the, the GBP. All those crosses do re really well. I mean, I like the Kiwi and I like the, um, and I like the uh, uh, Australian dollar. But if you stay with the, uh, with the pound and the, uh, and the euro, cross of anything, you're gonna do really well. Thank you so much, PK. Um, Jim, what I do is we start trading about 9 a.m. Eastern. So it'll be about 8 o'clock Central. And our target is between four and 500. If we make it in a half an hour, we stop. If we don't, I'm going to trade on. But I don't have a stop loss, which is, which is a problem because once in a while I'll blow. You know, I never like to stop with, with negative money. And I'll chase the market all day, which is really not a good thing. 80% of the time, we hit our profit target and we're, and we're out. And I have another rule, which is three and out. We get three winners in a row to start the morning. No matter what we make, we're going to close. Because that's really good money management. So we hit a profit target, we are, we're gone. And I really don't want to take more than 15 trades a week because of commissions. NT7 or NT8, either one. Okay, no, okay. Okay, Scott, I'm not sure, uh, I don't need to talk to them. Oh, hold, hold on a second. Scott, I mean, these guys make, it. I, I swear to you, they make a thousand a day. I'm not joking you. I, I kid you not. 
um, that's what that's what they, they make. And if I if I hook you up with them, they'll tell you that. I mean, I get their it's just they send me their back end and they send me their trades. And and that's what they average. I mean, sometimes they make more and sometimes a little bit less, but on average, what that's what they make. And they don't trade many contracts. But that is that is the God's honest truth. This system is brand new, Arnold. The full system has really just been operational about three months. And it's a great, I don't think there's a better one out there. I truly don't. When you get an entry, you have a very high probability of getting a win. You just have to be patient and you have to have lots of discipline. That's really cheap, Mark. See, we, 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 we pay about eight, eight bucks a round trip. So on 80 cents a round turn, the metric makes more sense. Um, so that, that, that's a different thing. We'll never get 80 cents a round turn though. But on 80 cents a round turn, I, I can see where they're coming from for sure. Um, but you know, we pay about four bucks um, a round turn. Yes, you do, Brian. You do. It does not interface with TradeStation. I'm sorry. The data stream we use is CQG. And it also, I also use Kinetic, which is not necessary. It's my backup. And you can also use, uh, there's a third one. Um, I just can't remember what it is. Uh, but... That's the one we need to get to is TradeStation, um, Michael. I wish we were on it because we always have people who ask for it on TradeStation. That, that's it, Michael. The pivots are, you know, are, are the areas where we, where we believe that the buyers and sellers are hiding, Steve. No, the, the slippage, Steve, was, was really when it's got maximum volume. That was two to four o'clock in the morning. We were trading it, uh, and and the slippage was horrendous. Plus, I have traders who traded who live in Europe, and they trade the two a.m. DAX all the time, and they send me emails all the time. I'm dumping the DAX. I can't take the DAX. I get four and six ticks of slippage of trade. If you watch it move at two a.m., or you do a retrospective at two a.m., don't just look at the entries. Look at the times. You're going to get four and five candles in two seconds or one second. And you're going to get a 25 tick move evolve like lightning. And you're never going to get into that trade um, without getting slippage. And it's at its highest volume period at 2 to 4 a.m. So that's what I'm looking at, it, Steve. If you can get in without slippage, that market is it'd be the only market I traded because it's so much money for a winner. And we get so many great entries, but it turns a winner into a loser on six ticks of slippage. So it's it's too difficult. I, I swear to God, my hair was going gray on it. Heinz, the problem is the mini DAX has very little volume. I looked at the mini DAX, it's just minute volume. If you want to trade the DAX, you got to trade the full DAX. It's where everybody is. I mean, that's the problem. I mean, you're trading a very thinly traded market and you don't want it. Take care, David. Yes, tomorrow, yes. We do, Michael. We use one year of market replay data. And we don't back test it, we forward test it. So we really run this thing through the, the ringer before we release it. No, it, it's, it's, sort, it's sort of a hybrid of them both, Peter. It's not an amalgam of them both. Um, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit different. But you can just send us an email and Rory, Rory will talk to you about it. Exactly, it is, John. It's very similar to the level three. I, 
I, it did happen, David. Um, I, I started at 2 a.m. and I started it at 6 a.m. I mean, I was up at five o'clock in the morning and the slippage is awful at all this, at all those times. I traded it for weeks at six o'clock in the morning. And all it did was give me a heart attack because we would get in, the entry would be perfect, the trade would go perfect, and we would get so much slippage on the trade. We either made very little money or the, um, or the trade would go a tick or two less than we needed to take out a full winner only because of slippage. And it moves so fast, it's too quick to adjust. So it's just it's just a nightmare instrument. Believe me, I would. I mean, when I looked at it uh, on paper, it looked unbelievable. But in, but in, in live action, it's a killer. So um, you can you, listen if you want to get aboard, you can give it a shot. But you got you got my warning. Um, you're going to get slippage on it. Thank you so much, John. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. My, listen, I want to give you. I want to give you um, the benefit of my own ex personal experience with with everything, and to, to try to to try to head off an issue with you. I mean, if you want to trade the DAX, you should sim it for for a week. And you're going to see, but make sure the simulator is not on fill on touch um, because you'll never get slippage. It'll just fill you automatically. You know, put it on the real sim mode, and you're going and you're going to and you're really going to have a nightmare. So listen, everyone, have a really wonderful evening. And I hope to see you in the trading room tomorrow because we're going to make money. Um, and uh, that's my goal. So take care and have a really, really great night. So long, everybody. Bye-bye.